If saints are still in Abraham's bosom today, where do tribulation saints go when they die? Are they in heaven based upon Revelation 6, verse 9? Get with me Revelation chapter 6, and notice verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. What happens in, in Revelation 6, there's a vision that's given that, that appears to be in heaven. And what John does is he witnesses the souls that were slain during the 70th week under the altar. And so the person sending in the question says, well, those souls seems like they're in heaven because they're under the altar, as was described in Revelation 6. But aren't Old Testament saints today, even during the dispensation of grace, in Abraham's bosom? Get Acts chapter 2. The conventional teaching is the following. What many people will say is, in time past, when people died, where they went is they went to Abraham's bosom, which was in the heart of the earth. If you read Luke 16, the account of the rich man and Lazarus, Lazarus dies and the rich man dies, and they both go down into the earth, and there's a section of blessedness called Abraham's bosom, and then there's a section that's called hell. And Abraham's bosom is a place of blessedness, hell not so much. And there's a great gulf that separates the two of them. What people then say is people stayed in Abraham's bosom until the cross. And when Jesus Christ shed his blood for man's sin, Abraham's bosom was taken from the earth up to heaven. And that's the way that it's typically taught. But think through that with me, if you would. It is typically taught that way in fundamentalism because fundamentalism does not distinguish between Israel and the body of Christ. Now let's think just for a minute. As you think about the promises that were given to Israel, where does Israel expect to end up on the chart? Do they expect to end up in heaven or do they expect to end up on the earth? Well, they expect to end up on the earth. They expect to be resurrected into the millennial kingdom and they expect to be on the new earth for all eternity. Where does the body of Christ expect to be? Well, we know that if we are absent from the body today, we are present with the Lord. And we know from 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1, we have a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So the basic dispensational principles tell us there's a fundamental distinction between Israel and the body of Christ. Israel is looking for an earthly inheritance. Now notice with me Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, and look with me at verse 34. For David is not ascended into the heavens. Now ponder that. Acts 2 is well after the cross. It's after the cross. It's after the Lord Jesus Christ's resurrection. It's after his ascension into heaven in Acts 1. It's all the way over here in Acts 2. And what Peter says, speaking by the Holy Ghost, is David is not ascended into heaven. On the authority of that verse, I would tell you David is not ascended into heaven. I realize fundamentalism says that Abraham's bosom went up to heaven after the cross, but that's not what Acts 2 says. And if you think about it just for a minute, why would Abraham's bosom go up to heaven? It, are the saints in Abraham's bosom looking to be in the new heavens? They're not going to be. They're going to be on the earth. And in fact, what they expect to be is they expect to be resurrected into the kingdom when Ezekiel describes the graves being opened.
So I would suggest to you that what happens is Old Testament saints are part of Abraham's bosom, and they continue to be in Abraham's bosom today in the center of the earth, and they will be resurrected into the kingdom at that future time. So now someone says, well, based upon Revelation 6, don't those tribulation saints go to heaven? Well, think about it with me if you would. What are those tribulation saints looking for? Get Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. And look with me at verse 4. And let's start in verse 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So in Revelation 20, we're reading about the millennial kingdom. Now notice verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So the tribulation saints are going to be resurrected into the millennial kingdom, just like the Old Testament saints. So what I would tell you is going on there, you're free to study this out for yourself, is the tribulation saints that are martyred go to Abraham's bosom, just like the Old Testament saints, and they're all there until they are resurrected into the millennial kingdom. What you're seeing in Revelation 6 is, is, is simply a vision, but it's not a description of uh, it's not a denial of the fact that those saints continue to be in Abraham's bosom.